Hi, I'm a wizard, but not the magical kind. You know, when I was a kid, I was thrilled to watch all of the not you Harry Potter movies that came out. But something has always bothered me about the world of Harry Potter. Wizards don't seem to understand which spells are strong and which ones are F tier. When I asked my wife, a rabid Harry Potter fan, what's the most powerful spell in Harry Potter, she said the Imperious Curse. The Imperious Curse lets you completely control another person's actions. You can make them say or do terrible things, and there's no way to tell if it's really them or if they're being controlled. It certainly sounds like a very powerful spell, but here's the thing, it's not. It's not even close to the most powerful spell. For example, one of the most powerful spells in Harry Potter is easily this tent. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, buckle in, f***os, because today I'm going to list the top nine most powerful spells in Harry Potter. But before we begin, I want to be clear what I mean when I say that a spell is powerful. The power level of a spell will be measured by how difficult the task would be to do without using any magic. Let's look at a first year spell, Lumos for example. How difficult is this to do without magic? Ah, uh, flashlight motherfucker, garbage tier spell. What about the Imperious Curse? Easy. All you need to do is kidnap one of their family members and say you'll kill them unless they do exactly what you tell them to. That is a spell for babies. But what about Diminuendo, the spell that lets you shrink objects? Well, now we're talking. That is a powerful spell, a task that's impossible to do without magic. Those are the kinds of spells on this list. And we are talking about spells in this video, not magical objects, potions, or creatures. Those can be their own videos. Number nine, the Protean Charm. The Protean Charm is used to link objects together so that changing one object will change all of them. For example, Hermione once linked a bunch of fake coins together using the Protean Charm, so that she could write messages on one, and everyone else with a linked coin would be able to read the message. So why is this spell powerful? Because it allows for faster than light transmission of information. Us muggles are only able to send quantum information instantaneously between entangled particles, but the Protean Charm allows you to send any information instantaneously. The ability to send information instantly to anyone in the universe is what makes this spell so powerful. It doesn't quite break the laws of physics, but it gets damn close. Number eight, the Legilla, the Legilla, the Legilla, oh, fuck it. This spell allows the user to look at the memories, thoughts, and emotions of a target person. This spell is featured heavily in the Order of the Phoenix, wherein Snape tries to train Harry to resist Legilla Mency, something Voldemort is particularly proficient at. So why is this such a powerful spell? At the moment, it's nearly impossible for regular people to do this with any amount of specificity. We can determine someone's mood by seeing which parts of their brain are active during an MRI scan. We can see where in the brain particular memories are stored, but we are nowhere close to be able to see thoughts and memories the way Legilimency can. Legilimency is the goalpost of neuroscientists around the world, but for now it's still magic. That makes Legilimency one of the most powerful spells in Harry Potter. Number 7, Avada Kedavra, The Killing Curse. It's unblockable and causes instant death to its target. This spell gets a lot of hype, but well, it kind of sucks. Killing people people isn't difficult? Look, I do it all the time. You just take a gun and- bah, 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 bah! What's interesting about Avada Kedavra isn't so much the killing part, but the instant part. The person is killed instantly, with no marks or damage to the body. To me at least, this suggests a complete halt of biochemical activity in the body, and if so, then the killing curse breaks the laws of the universe. Much of the body's biochemistry uses concentration gradients and enzymes to function. These are passive processes that don't require any energy use. Stopping these processes processes instantaneously would fundamentally break the laws of physics. That would make the killing curse very powerful indeed. To test this hypothesis, we could take the corpse of someone who was killed with Avada Kedavra and then put it in a sterile environment. And if the corpse doesn't decompose, then we'd know that its biochemical activity has been halted. What we know for sure, however, is that I am dangerously unhinged. Next thing, please. Number six, 
Engorgio, the growth spell. Engorgio, Conjuring, and Transfiguration spells all do something that are nearly impossible for muggles to do. These spells add matter to the universe. After the Big Bang, very little matter has been created in the universe. We've been able to create a few nanograms at the Hadron Collider, but Engorgio does what the brightest minds of the non-magic community could never do. It causes the target to grow, thereby increase in mass. This is best illustrated by Professor Moody in the Goblet of Fire, while he demonstrates the use of the Imperious Curse. To show the class the curse better, he uses Engorgio to make this bug thing larger. It grows about five times its normal size. Now a scorpion, which is about the same size, weighs about five grams, which means that if we were to increase its size by five times, it would weigh 25 grams. So how much energy is required to add 20 grams of mass to the universe? This simple demonstration by Mad-Eye Moody required 1.7975 quadrillion joules of energy, or about the same amount of energy that 8.6 million people consume each day. That is quite an energy cost to help the people in the back see a little better. So these kinds of mass increasing spells, such as conjuring objects or making something larger, are borderline impossible to do without magic, because we can't make matter in large amounts, and even if we could, the energy costs would be astronomical. Number 5. Evanesco, the vanishing spell. This spell will remove the target from existence. Objects are vanished into non-being, which is to say everything. This runs into the same problem as in Gorgio, but in the opposite direction. Just as it's very difficult to add matter to the universe, it's also very difficult to remove it. A burning wood fire, for example, breaks down the wood into ash and smoke. That's just entropy at work. But nothing is deleted. Nothing is removed from the universe. That makes Evanesco a seriously powerful spell, and it definitely can't be done without magic. The deletion or removal of matter from the universe should release an enormous amount of energy, so the vanishing spell should cause an explosion large enough to level a city block any time someone tries to use it, but it doesn't because magic. Hi, I'm a dog or something, and I'm the mascot of a not very good VPN service. And today I'm here to tell you that- Oh god, oh please no, why is this happening? It's not my time, I'm not ready to die. Hi, I'm the mascot of a much better VPN service, Surfshark VPN. And today I'm here to tell you that you don't need to settle for an average VPN. Surfshark VPN is fast, secure, and only costs a few dollars a month. Surfshark lets you get around locked regional content on all popular streaming services, such as Netflix, Disney+, and more. Your data is 100% safe with their uncrackable encryption, so you can always feel safe using public Wi-Fi. What's more, you can use it on unlimited devices with a single subscription, such as your phone, laptop, even your game console. So why wait? You can get hold on. I think I see another mascot over there. You can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash filmherald and enter the promo code filmherald for 83% off and three extra months for free. And if you're still not convinced in the first 30 days, you can get a full refund. So there's no reason not to give it a try. Number 4. Wingardium Leviosa, a common spell with incredible ramifications to the universe when used. Wingardium Leviosa causes its target to float or levitate, as if gravity had no effect on it. And that's the problem. Wingardium Leviosa appears to remove gravity for the object, and there are a host of other spells in the same category. The Hover Charm, the Feather Light Charm, and the Flying Charm all do different variations of the same thing. The Feather Light Charm is particularly revealing because it makes an object weigh less, like turning down the dial on gravity. Gravity is one of the fundamental forces of our universe, and there is no way a regular person can replicate the effect of this powerful group of spells without the use of magic. Wingardium Leviosa is one of the most powerful spells in Harry Potter, and the only reason it isn't higher on this list is because Hermione can go to hell. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa, and I will die on this hill before I admit otherwise. Ronald Wayne. Weasley. It's Levios. Oh, uh, Levios. Uh, uh. 
Number three, Capacious Extremis, the extension charm. This spell allows the user to make the interior of an object larger than its exterior. The most famous example is probably Newt's commander's luggage, which contained an entire zoo within. There's also Barty Crouch Jr.'s case, Hermione's bag, and finally the Weasley's tent. As far as I can tell, Capacious Extremis causes an impossible warp in space-time to cause this effect. And while it's technically possible to increase the size of space-time, it's only possible to do so with incredibly high amounts of gravity, such as the gravity you would experience near a black hole. And if you've seen Interstellar, you'll know that space and time are inexorably linked. Any high-gravity environment would dramatically slow the passage of time. However, that doesn't seem to happen with the use of Capacious Extremis. The extension charm reveals that wizards have complete control over gravity, because not only can they bend space-time to their will, they can also separate space and time itself, something that shouldn't be possible based on what we know about the universe. And finally, to add insult to injury, Capacious Extremis also reduces the weight of the object itself. Otherwise, Newt wouldn't be able to lift his suitcase. This simple, innocuous tent breaks the universe in multiple ways, making it one of the most powerful spells in Harry Potter. Number two, Apparition the teleport spell. You already know what I'm going to say, don't you? You can't travel faster than the speed of light. Except when you can. And that's apparition in a nutshell. The protean charm is number nine on this list because it allows the user to transfer information instantaneously between locations. But apparition allows matter to teleport across space-time. This breaks the unbreakable speed limit of the universe. Nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. The only thing that limits apparition is that you can only use it to travel to places you've already been. I know there are exceptions to this, don't at me. Apparating also gets less and less accurate the further away you apparate. Intercontinental apparition is highly discouraged, and even Voldemort wouldn't chance apparating across Europe. So apparition has some hard limits for a spell that breaks the universe, and that's what keeps it from claiming the number one most powerful spell. And the number one most powerful spell in Harry Potter is the Hour Reversal Charm. This might seem like a bit of a cop-out to some, and I get that, because the Hour Reversal Charm is the spell used to enchant Time Turners, which are magical objects that can turn back time, and at the beginning I said we would only be talking about spells, not magical creatures or magical objects. However, you can use the charm on its own without the use of a Time Turner. The only reason the charm is usually contained in objects such as Time Turners is that it's incredibly dangerous to use and quote-unquote unstable according to Saul Croker. The Hour Reversal Charm, while unstable, whatever that means, is easily the most powerful spell in Harry Potter because it allows you to go back in time and change the past. An honorable mention also goes to Reverte, the reversion spell which moves objects back in time. The ability to undo mistakes and right your past wrongs is pretty self-explanatory in terms of its utility, but similar to Apparition, the Hour Reversal Charm completely breaks one of the universe's most fundamental laws. The theory of general relativity states that time is relative. Depending on how much gravity you're experiencing and how fast you're going, the flow of time will affect you differently than the rest of the universe. The faster you go, the slower time moves for you. For example, astronaut Scott Kelly spent 520 days in the International Space Station, which travels at 28,000 kilometers per hour in low Earth orbit. Scott Kelly has a twin, and when he returned from space, scientists discovered that Scott was 5 milliseconds younger than his twin brother. Because of his high speed relative to people on Earth, Scott Kelly actually traveled 5 milliseconds into the future over his 520 day space flight. This effect becomes more extreme the faster you go, so technically yes, time traveling into the future is possible, but there is no way to travel into the past. Time may be relative, but it flows in only one direction. Therefore, the Hour Reversal Charm is easily one of the most powerful spells in Harry Potter, and in my opinion, it's the number one most powerful spell in Harry Potter. But if you think I got anything in this video wrong, then both physics nerds and Harry Potter nerds have a unique opportunity to band together and tear me apart in the comments. What do you think is the most powerful spell? Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Film Herald.